I'm not sure whether she has me or I have her, but uh, we got uh, and we got plenty of food over here. I see that's good. Uh, the, uh, I think I think either you're going to be hopefully a little more educated about wolves when I leave, uh, pleasingly, or you're going to be big disappointed because we don't do a dog pony show. You can't train a wolf, you can't tame a wolf, and uh, not because they're, big, they, uh, they're more like a cat. They have a cat. Yes, most of you have a cat, and I've, I've got a Bengal, and uh, uh, she pretty much does what she wants to do, too. The, uh, if she if not trainable and she's not trained, then, you know, what is she? I think she's socialized. And I like to talk to school groups and tell them that uh, they're in school to learn history, math, English, and all this good stuff, geography. But mainly they're there to be socialized and learn that and to get along with, uh, with their friends and neighbors and enemies and everybody. Uh, later on, they'll have one more chance to socialize. And they won't like that because they'll That doesn't work either. It's a, it's a good thing to uh, uh, wolves are so smart that I think they're like smart uh, school children. They kind of uh, learn at a, a fairly good pace. And that, that's a wolf. She, she's heard this before, and uh, uh, before you think she's my my guard animal, uh, wolves don't attack people. So they, in a the while, they don't like. Uh, yeah, you flake out. That's good. This is really a compliment to, to your group here because I have been places where they never settle down. They pace all the time. That's bad on the animal. But uh, she trusts you and, and uh, it's good vibes, I guess. And uh, so we'll have to wake her up in a little act like a wolf. But, uh, now, if, if you have questions as we go through this, because there's no ABC123 thing, so please raise your hand and uh, uh, ask question and we'll try to answer it. Yes? Issue one there? Uh, no. No tranquilizer? No. No. She doesn't take drugs. Well, wolves don't do drugs. You know, they know the drugs. This one matter to me or um, she's a female and would be She's full grown. Yeah, they full grown. Maybe eighty two. Talk about wild wolves. I'll tell you how this one is. Um, this wolf did not come from the wild. I didn't go pull her out of the ground, you know, from a from a litter. So uh, uh, she came from a breeder that used to be in uh, Candler, and she moved to Brevard, and she doesn't have wolves anymore. She never sold them. She didn't want to put them on the open market. But These guys go to the vet about four times a year. I'm fortunate to have a vet in uh, Canton, North Carolina, fairly close to where I live. Uh, he's the canine vet for the nation, uh, and um, he's pretty sharp, pretty much on uh, on canines. But um, now the, these wolves live in uh, uh, pretty much seclusion, as much as you can get up there. Uh, I can't hear any noise or any extraneous noise living there. They probably can because they much better than I can uh, in between Maggie and I about 4,000 foot elevation so it's it's quiet it's peaceful it's it's cool um, if we have snow up there we usually start hitting it about the 3,500 foot elevation so if they have snow part of the year they seem to enjoy that too but it uh, the only thing a wolf stays away from is rain and we've had plenty of that but they don't like to get wet they're like a goat you know if you have goats they uh, they just don't tolerate rain very well, you know. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. This is a this is a timber wolf. Uh, timber, timber, timber wolf, gray wolf, same thing. Uh, the gray phase. Phase, phase, phase. I have uh, one red phase in the pictures up here. I've got a good friend in Gainesville, Georgia, who loves to take pictures, and uh, he, uh, uh, he 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 comes and takes them right off, but. Uh, red phase one is the only male I have, and by that I mean 
uh, it's just the guard hairs, the under, under hair, the wool, which they haven't shed this year, they're, they're starting to. But the um, uh, guard hairs keep them clean, give them their color. Uh, they have, they also come in black. Um, metal knit, or I'd like to have a black one, but um, uh, I would have had to have paid for it dearly, and I knew it wasn't worth that. But the reason I wanted the black one was to do a, a school program and you know, get through with the, or the red phase wolf, put it up and bring the black one in. And I think I'd have the same reaction if I brought a black one in here. Somebody's going to back up, you know, and, and, and ooh and ah and maybe say some bad things. Black's just a color, and uh, that's all it is. And uh, the black wolves get along fine in the wild, just like the red and the gray. Uh, why would you not see a white timber wolf? What's wrong with that idea? Camouflage, yeah, you just camouflage will be there. Their whole world is about hiding and uh, running and catching food. Uh, fortunately, I bring the food to them. We'll talk about that. But uh, uh, if it wasn't for that, they would be out there running right now. That's the reason to use this, um, this lead and this choke chain. Uh, it's not to punish the wolf. It doesn't hurt the wolf. They've got a tremendous neck and, uh, but uh, this keeps the collar from slipping over the If they slip the collar and get outside, they're gone. They don't listen. They're gone over the hill up and they never look back. Uh, and they would wind up in uh, somebody's backyard. Now, they could survive on uh, a daily diet, and we'll talk about that. But um, they wouldn't survive that long. They'd go into somebody's backyard, they to play with the children until they were children. And they would, uh, they would they shake. Simple, but yeah. No, they, they might fall under the water, but uh, they're not going to actively try to stay out of it. They don't like it. Uh, they can swim naturally, they can swim, that's water. But, uh, and some of the other good, uh, good programs like that to learn from. They, uh, they'll wait for the moose or whatever to come out of the river. Uh, they're not going to go in there. Uh, they're too smart for that, for one thing. They're, they, uh, they're very intelligent, and, and I like to tell people that uh, somebody in Veracruz talks about dumb animals. They get very good in Veracruz. I'm a lot of places where they talk about a dumb animal. And I said, yep, yeah, saw one this morning. I looked in the mirror. And, uh, and I, didn't like what I saw, so I took, I took all my mirrors out of the house. But, but no, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm the dumb animal when it comes to the, to the rules. <laughs> now you don't don't have to have a permit uh, in North or South Carolina, and that's primarily where I am. Um, I used to take them into Georgia, and I was politely informed, and it was politely that I couldn't bring them into Georgia. But they have a wild and vicious out there, and on that list of wild and vicious. Somebody somewhere in Wolf Hybrid, somebody somewhere um, was bitten, no doubt, uh, by a hybrid. It ain't gonna happen with a, with a wolf, but uh, probably a politician and they, they passed the law. So they, they, didn't, they, didn't eat, they didn't eat the politician, so uh, you know. But no, I, I don't have to have one. I'm not supposed to stand up here and preach to you that this is a full wolf. It might be, and it sure is, but. Uh, my vet in uh, Canton, North Carolina, protects my wolves. He's the, he's the canine vet for the nature center in Asheville. He's very knowledgeable, good guy. And he, uh, he protects them by listing them on their paperwork as a wolf-looking dog. So, and, and DNA is not going to get you any closer than that. They're a canine. Yeah. Yes. They do. Yeah, they travel in packs. Uh, uh, families, packs, same thing. Uh, they do, and uh, they, they really like security. That's what it's all about, too. I mean, they you know, natural. They're, they're more effective. Uh, they like security. And uh, when we get ready to break up, uh, let me get outside the door. We've got a large group here, and we don't want to crowd the wolf and scare it. It's not going to do anything, but maybe lick you, but I'd rather spare the wolf. So we'll go, I'll go outside, and as you come by, I do want you to come by and spend as much time as you want. We'll have a line of people, but 
Um, you need to get your hands on the wolf, uh, pet it, smell your hand. You're not going to smell a doggy odor. There, there is no odor that we can pick up unless they're wet and, and uh, they'll smell like a canine then. But they, um, uh, they have no fleas or ticks. And people say, well, why is that? Oh, I know it's the, it's the heavy fur. Well, in the summertime, they don't have it anymore. So it can't be that. It has to be in the circulatory system. And I don't think. drug company, uh, an animal drug company, then uh, it's locked up somewhere, kind of like the, the carburetor that was going to get 100 miles to a gallon. So it's bought up and, and didn't and never know. I don't think they ever know about it, but they can have it. Different. In, in North Carolina? Uh, no, not 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 anymore. Um, my people were McGregor's, and uh, uh, they had my only claim to fame. They had the first white baby, non-Native American, uh, in uh, in the Appalachians up here in this area, in Swannanoa. So that and a quarter won't get you a cup of coffee. But but we did we did at one time own the land that the Biltmore's on. So I'm thinking of going back claiming that. But uh, <laughs> I found out I couldn't afford a ticket to get in. So you know. I, Ain't gonna work, but no, the uh, Native Americans did not get rid of the wolf. It was the white man, and it was ignorance, lack of knowledge, and um, uh, they trapped and shot and poisoned every one of them. They did a good job because we don't have them anymore. Uh, if you want to see the, the timber wolf, of course, you go you go north to the northern states that border Canada, Alaska. On the other side of the world, you have uh, uh, Siberia, Russia, and uh, the countries. And they still have plenty of them. The uh, red wolf, which which this is not a red wolf, that's a red fade timber wolf. The uh, red wolf was reintroduced to uh, uh, the Smokies up there. I work now with the uh, Great Smoky Mountain Association. Uh, does good things just like your group does. The money they earn goes to the national park, and, and uh, I'm proud to be working with them. I'm the miller up at Mingus Mill, so if you want to find me Monday through Thursday, that's where I am in the summer. But the red wolf was put in. They did a super job in uh, uh, doing the medical part of it and uh, I guess the political part too, but they released it. In my, my estimation, they released it too close to civilization uh, and it came in contact with dogs. Uh, they were not, uh, the pups were not protected when they were going the second generation, so they died of part of it. And that won't, uh, they decided to abandon that project. If you're down around Charleston or you were down at Charleston, Bull Island off the coast. They had another pack there that was very successful. They moved them up to Alligator Sound, Becky, uh, behind the Outer Bank, and I think that's in, in limbo right now, too, is what happens to them. But they, size wise, they were smaller than the timber and larger than the coyote. So, uh, yes, they moved them. Just Oh yeah, 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 and, and to show you, I'm not a not a businessman. I, after I, I was downsized out of beef after 24 years, and, and uh, had to do something on to stay tied in the wildlife, and I decided I'd start a little company, Epic, and I'm going to some insect control and help people uh, capture and relocate animals off their property or out of their house. Uh, not a businessman, so didn't charge enough, didn't make a go with that. Uh, I go to Whitted Range's house, he didn't have two nickels, I still help him. So I'm, I'm just not a businessman. On the, uh, uh, on the other, other hand, the, uh, uh, the, as we said, the wolves were here. I uh, wish they still were. And, and uh, I thought about having a rental wolf company or program, you know, and, and get, get rid of these coyotes. That's the only, between that and the trigger finger, that's the answer. Uh, and before we, you know, get too deep with the coyotes because I was accused one time about uh, uh, lecturing on coyotes and being down on coyotes. And this gentleman told me he's a great guy. He said, um, uh, you know, they're all God's creatures. Well, they are. And I'm a Christian and I work for the Lord's teaching game. I tell people that so they, they understand. But the, uh, uh, the coyotes uh, are the only serial killer that we have. 
and we don't want to call it human, but the serial killer we have takes all the chickens, all your whatever, they're not touched, and they can't get one for a meal. Uh, they love to go in backyards, um, they take small things from backyards, and the adults know what I'm talking about, and the adults are the protectors of small things. So you need to think ahead. This gentleman told me that uh, shouldn't be so down on coyotes. And I politely told him that, you know, you need to decide ahead of time uh, a coyote or a grandchild, let's put it that way, or a dog. Or a so uh, they're here, they're in 49 states. Uh, they haven't made it to Hawaii. Hawaii's got enough problems with uh, not just the lava, but some of the uh, invasive species out there. So uh, they are around. Uh, they're closer than you think. Uh, Atlanta, for example, they're in, they live in the mediums in the landscaping, and they come out at night, sometimes in the day, and uh, they hit the backyards for food, and they're, they're scavengers. Yes, sir. Uh, they don't exist. It's kind of like the, the uh, cougar. He doesn't exist either. But you want to follow me around, I'll show you where they are. And uh, uh, again, you know, without getting into the politics and stuff, and everything comes down to money eventually. But um, um, no, they're they're not uh, they're not even no no. And, and the only time you're going to see a wolf here that's not a wolf hybrid, uh, it had to have escaped from a zoo or something a compound. Uh, the wolf hybrids look so similar that that's what some people see if they take a picture of one in the wild or something. Uh, it's just like uh, um, uh, the big cat. I've seen several pictures of a big cat in the wild, and when you, I don't do computer work, but I have friends that do, and when they really investigate it and put something there for size comparison, it's a big black house cat. Uh, but when you see that picture, it looks good. Uh, but I've, I've seen them uh, across the road uh, between Highlands and Cashers. Uh, when I did, uh, when I laid out the 43-mile hiking trail for Duke years ago up above Highway 11, um, I was co uh, collecting scat and uh, tracks up there in hair samples. So. Anybody else? Yes? Um, how many wolves are out there? Okay, uh, good question. I have, uh, have three right now. I have had four. Uh, and then you do the math, so I'm not good at that either, but... Uh, in, in uh, 33 years, um, they live 10 to 12 years for me. So figure how many I've had. I don't know, but uh, uh, I hate to see them go when they do. And we'll talk about that. But the uh, uh, their names, yeah, us humans name everything. I knew a lady one time named Pet Rock, and that was a little bit, a little bit overboard for me. But they, uh, they were nice rocks. But you know they. Uh, <laughs> But the, uh, the wolves have to have names. Well, if this animal's not going to answer to the name and not, uh, not going to respond to my commands or wishes or whatever, uh, then I just call them wolf. You know, wolf good enough. I could call them tree. They wouldn't care. But their, their name's wolf. Now, the vet didn't think that was very funny. So uh, uh, he said, I keep legal um, uh, medical records. And if you don't come up with something, that's number one, two, three, four, whatever. And I said, man, they, they, they deserve something better than that. So uh, they're still named Wolf, but it's a Native American language. Uh, this, is, this is Wolf and Cherokee. Now, when I do programs up there, I always ask if anybody speaks Cherokee. And uh, sure enough, around Cherokee, North Carolina, uh, uh, Haywood County, whatever, around the National Park, some child's going to raise their hand and tell me the answer. Uh, but Wolf and Cherokee is Waya. And why, uh, if you go to Franklin, North Carolina, into Macon County over there, you're going to see Waya Ball, Waya Creek, um, Waya Insurance Agency. I mean, they name everything Waya. And uh, the only other words you need to know in Cherokee, especially if you come to see me up there, uh, is Yona. And, and Yona is a Yona Dam, there's a Yona Lake. Uh, but you need to know what Yona means. And when you, when you hear it, don't run. Because Running's no good. It, it means bear. And uh, uh, we just took one. I say we, the, the park biologist, uh, tranquilized and weighed, measured, tattooed, tagged, and took a tooth uh, from a big black male. Um, day before yesterday, up in the dome, I was up there working. 
and uh, they moved him out because he didn't respond to four blasts on the air horn. He just didn't face him. And he liked to follow these three backpackers and follow them for about a mile. So they thought it was time that he was relocated. So he he got got moved out, you know. He got a free meal and a new suit of clothes and they moved him. They put him out of there. Um, this one this one is Wyatt and, and that's Cherokee. The big red one is um, um, Wolf in Delaware. Did anybody see the last of the Mohegan? Okay, that, that meant the last of the Wolf clan. So Mohegan is Wolf in, in Delaware. And the Delaware were friends of the Cherokee. They didn't, they didn't fight. Also the Seneca's on up further in, in uh, New York. But uh, now the, the youngest one, and she's not that young anymore. She's real cute in that picture. I wish she could have stayed that size and that cute. She didn't. She, she grew up. Uh, she's a five-year-old, and uh, and the smallest one I have. The uh, now her her name is is Wolf in Lakota suit. Uh, anybody see Dances with Wolf? Okay. Well, and and there, if you watch it again, you have to really listen and re rerun it. But um, Lakota suit for Wolf is uh, it's Kankaha, and it sounds good, looks good on paper, but again, the wolf could care less. So when you watch the movie. Kevin Costner was asking the Lakota Sioux out on the plains, you know, what is that running around? And he said, it's Konkaha. So that's where that name came from. I used to have an Arctic uh, female alpha, and uh, I thought, well, you know, we need a, need a name from up in Alaska somewhere. So I had a friend make a bunch of calls to find a village or language that we could speak. It's hard to do. So Inuit Eskimo for, um, uh, for wolf is Amarok, and that was her name when she was alive. Now, when these guys pass away and they do they do die, um, I'll uh, take them in that old truck out there. It hauls wolf cage and firewood, and that's it because it's too expensive to drive. It's old, but the uh, uh, I'll take them up in that old truck as far as I can up a mountain and park. And if it's not if it's not a pretty rock or something around. Then uh, I'll put them on my shoulders and we'll walk on to the top or wherever. It's always a pretty place to put it out, say a little prayer, and be gone. I hope they preserve that way in camp somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how long do your dogs live? What's a real old dog? Okay, somewhere in the late teens, maybe. Uh, I work for a vet clinic in Charlotte. That's all I ever wanted to be. So. I found out there were 30 of us trying for eight vacancies at NC State way back when, and I didn't get to vet school, but at any rate, got out in wildlife. But um, uh, they, uh, uh, the wolves don't have the luxury of living that long. And, well, you know, why, why do your dogs live that long? What helps them? Yeah, the vets, yeah, easy life, yeah, a lot of good TLC. And I'll bet you that you bring the food to them instead of them having to go hunt the food. Wolves don't have that luxury, so an old wolf in the wild, you know, six and a half, and they're gone. And that's primarily uh, internal parasites, uh, then rabies, and then they get broken backs, crushed skulls, broken legs from trying to get their food. Uh, and it, uh, it doesn't work out too well for them. So they're, they're gone. The uh, wolves I have live to 10 or 12, and that's due to the, the good vet care and the, and the good food they get. Yes, ma'am. Uh, another good question because they they do eat yeah uh, well let me ask you some more questions too what do you think now you know wolves live in a pack or a family uh, just like we do and we'll go out to eat together that's good or maybe you'll go through the drive through at McDonald's not every day because that's bad but but the uh, the wolf doesn't have that luxury but when he's trying to get a, a, a daily snack daily diet what do you think that's going to be yeah, mice, mice, are, mice are number one, and again, has, has anybody been to Yellowstone? Okay, I flew over it during the big fire and didn't have a chance to land. I'd I like to go back if I live that long, but the, uh, uh, the wolf was taken out of Yellowstone, uh, and I like to think that was ignorant, lack of knowledge or something back then, but uh, they took him out and immediately the park started downhill decline, uh, and it was due to the wolf being gone. Uh, the plants started uh, dying, they weren't reproducing, they weren't growing like they should. Uh, no new plants, and no plants, no animals, not the, the herbivores. So they, uh, it was going downhill, 
so they put the wolf back in, and all the wolf did was take care of the mice and the rats and the rodents, and uh, that, that solved the problem up there. But again, like a cat, they, uh, they walk like a cat and run like a cat. They, they like to walk sideways, they, uh, they climb a tree, not straight up and down, but they'll climb a 45 degree angle. They, they like to be up high in a tree or a rock or something. But they, uh, they don't live in a tree like a bear does. A bear will stay up there three-fourths of his life. But the, uh, the wolf uh, was put back in. Everything went great, and that, that's all it took. You just don't break the food chain. If you do, then we're, you're in the, uh, the trouble. So mine, uh, uh, they can catch a mouse or something if it comes in the compound. But the, uh, uh, in the wild, what's a, what's a wolf pack or a family going to get after? What do they need? Yeah, depending on where they where they live, where the the range is. But yeah, any of the hoofed animals they call them ungulates, uh, deer, moose, elk, caribou, bison, uh, all all are fair game. For them, but it takes the whole pack in order to, to, to bring down those animals. Now they have a tremendous burst of, burst of speed that can like a quarter horse for about a quarter of a mile, about 40 miles an hour. And if that doesn't do the job, then they they're very persistent. If you're hungry, uh, you're, you're going to stay after them. And they'll they'll follow a herd of, of let's say caribou uh, for uh, three or four or five. They have to herd. Which ones are they going to take out? Okay, the old is right. Now I'm going to three to get me pretty quick. Uh, the, uh, they'll take out the old, the infirm, uh, uh, terminal disease, and that kind of thing. The young, fortunately, and the uh, uh, the breeding stock is kept in the front or in the middle, so they're they're well protected. They, they don't get them. Uh, it's a good thing they do take out some of the terminally diseased animals because they can spread the disease to the rest of the herd. Now, when the wolf gets a meal, it stops with him. Uh, doesn't it's not doesn't affect the wolf. Doesn't make him sick. Uh, doesn't pass on from there. So they they do a good job, and they may take uh, let's say four animals out of the, the rear of a herd of uh, caribou uh, to feed maybe 25 wolves in a pack, and that's a kind of an average number. Uh, average range might be uh, uh, 50 to 100 square miles, depending on the, the availability of food and everything. Uh, guys don't have to eat um, every day. I don't think you could really make a wolf eat every day, because when they do eat, they gorge. They just pack it in. And when I do programs at Catalucci Ranch, I like to, to use the word gorge, and it's good food up there, and every Friday night, and um, uh, people don't quite get that word gorge, and I said, I watched y'all eat tonight, so I, I, know what, I know what gorging is, you, uh, you obviously uh, do gorge like a wolf, but they, uh, if they can get a good uh, heavy meal once a week, then you know, they're pretty content, they really don't want to go two weeks, but uh, mine, if I, I People think we live in the mountains, or you do here, and you can go out and knock a deer off any time. Deer, road, deer roadkill, and I'm over there close to the Gorge Road on 40 going into Tennessee, and you think, well, that's a good spot. In 18 years, I've had uh, two calls from uh, Highway Patrol to come pick up a, a deer, and it has to be very fresh. Uh, they don't bury their food in the wild, not like a big cat or, or a dog or something. But uh, no, I had to find something else. So, went to Ingalls, that's our big supermarket up there, and, and um, my butcher, Ernie, he's a bear hunter, he's got bear dogs, and he knows what it takes to feed them, uh, both nutritionally and, and cost and price. I have chicken out for it. He has all the food. Now, if somebody wants to donate something else, uh, the uh, homeless shelters, some of the Christian uh, uh, groups up there, they get food donated to them. That they can't feed to the public. So, uh, and supposedly, you know, uh, 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 chemical, uh, chemically free. But at any rate, that's what they eat every time they eat. And it doesn't take them but about, uh, I'd say, five minutes, four minutes, five minutes to eat that 10 pounds. They, they crunch. Uh, there's no problem 
with bones in a wolf because the digestive tract is so strong that there also is no cleanup uh, in, a, in a wolf compound. My compound happens to be an acre um, heavy duty chain link fence, regular chain link won't do, they, they stretch it, pull it, uh, and, and can't escape. But the um, uh, and woven and welded wire doesn't work at all. But it's eight feet heavy duty chain link, electricity around the top and the bottom, and it's turned in four feet inside so that they can't dig out because they love to dig. This one can go over that eight foot fence if the electricity's off. She can be over the top in about three seconds. And they don't have toenails, they have claws, so you don't have to trim toenails, that's a good thing. But they'll hang, she'll hang her front feet in there and, and go up it like a squirrel. And if that's not fast enough, especially at the top, she'll use those big canines, big fangs, and hang them in there and do a, a pull up with her neck. And uh, she's over the top, and uh, that really worries me, so I did have to put the electricity. But at any rate, they, uh, the wolf diet, I'm gonna recommend that to you. I don't see anybody needs it, but if you, if you do, you're, you're good outdoor people and stay trim. But the, uh, if you need a diet, the wolf diet's good. Uh, same exercise every week, uh, every day. Um, a lot of sleep. They like, like a cat to sleep most of their life away. But uh, the real key, the real secret is, uh, these guys eat on Sunday afternoon after church. And that's it. That's all. So you're gonna have to resign yourself to eating once a week. Um, but they do, they, they gorge, they eat everything they can, then they'll lay up uh, in, the, in the shade. They're, they're in the acre compound, they're in deep uh, poplar shade, about 4,000 foot elevation. Uh, cold spring water coming through all the time. The wolves have to have water or they, their digestive system doesn't work. Um, they're, uh, and of course when they're running, they really need it in the wild. But they'll drink maybe uh, two gallons of water a day. So they, they really have to have that. But the spring quit. Uh, in the summer, then you know, I'll have to haul water to them. Uh, they got a pretty good line up there. But yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, I, I get them at age uh, and uh, coming from the breeder, and then they go straight to the vet plant. So everything's taken care of. They don't belong out in public. Uh, people might want to think they do, and they really for it. Yeah, they don't belong. You get it home and, and try to teach it its name. It's not going to respond. And they're, they're smart enough to respond. I just don't think they want to. They're like a cat. So uh, you can call them three. It doesn't matter to them. They're, they're not going to answer. Uh, the other thing is that they try to teach them to, to fetch and roll over and, and come on command. And the wolf sits there like this, you know, and, and uh, you know, what are you, what are you trying to do? Uh, I knew one lady tried to send hers to obedience school, and it, and it, it flunked out, you know. But the uh, uh, they're they're their own animal, more more feline than, than canine. Yes, ma'am. It's avoidant, avoidance, yeah, yeah. And and uh, of course we weren't there then, but they still do that. Uh, they've got their their own uh, trails or. Um, ways of doing things, especially getting food. Uh, a cougar being a cat, uh, of course, uh, they're probably more into small animals. Uh, they're not going to take down a deer unless, you know, it, it opportunity comes. They're very opportunistic. And as far as a bear and a wolf, we get questions about that all the time up in the park. Well, we don't have wolves anymore, but bears and wolves pretty much got along because the bear, uh, maybe 15% of its diet was uh, uh, that of a carnivore. So uh, uh, they really don't overlap that much. The, uh, the bear, and I'm going to show you something that's a good time to do it. I need my wolf handler here. And if, you, if you're smart, you won't wake her up. So. <laughs> yeah, what, what's the one thing, I know you get a lot of people in here, biologists and all, but, and, and you're a uh, uh, conservative group. The, uh, what, what's the one thing that a biologist would really like to have to study? Money. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I've never seen it, but I didn't. I didn't have that with Duke Power either. They uh, they need a they need a skull, and this is a, this is a wolf skull. Let's see if I can get it in the light here. Yeah, that's your buddy. Yeah, that's your buddy. Yeah. That could be you. Uh, this is a 
the wolves uh, very heavy. Uh, the sagittal crest here is one, one giveaway. And when this animal is very young and um, uh, play hard from day one, it was hit in the head. So the sagittal crest is actually bent. It stayed bent that way the rest of its life. Here we go with the body contact. They, they feel safe when they have body contact. So uh, I've, I've ruined my wolf now, you know. So that's not the big bad wolf anymore. The, uh, uh, they, they have good eyesight. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that, one, that one licks, yeah. And there's only one problem with getting licked if you're a lady because this is what you look like in the morning. <laughs> uh, so that's bad. That's bad. I used to, I used to tell little girls and it made them cry. So I didn't the hitting the uh, They have a good sense of smell. The hearing is great too. But in a wolf, this much is, is the brain cavity. So they are very smart. And I'll show you another skull that's not quite that, that big. Uh, I think the thing that scares people the most are the canines, the, or the, uh, the fangs. Uh, those are just used to hold and grab. Uh, they get in the way of eating. The little teeth in the front and incisors that's used to strip the uh, meat off of bones. It's really interesting to go to uh, trouble to strip the meat off and then eat the bones to crunch them. And they have the jaw power in the back to crunch a, a femur on a meat when it's running uh, and bring it down. So uh, they, uh, they have very, very strong power. The side, the side teeth, the uh, uh, carnassials, is really where all the, the action takes place. They, uh, they'll eat from the side. They, uh, boy, you got her trained now. <laughs> they, uh, they eat from the side. It acts like scissors. They shear, and then they'll, they'll cut off the meat, wolf it down, and it stays there for maybe three or four days. Uh, for that reason, uh, I'm glad it's Saturday now. They eat tomorrow, so she's she's probably she's probably real hungry. So we're going to be careful. But the uh, no, you don't want to be around them for about two or three days after they eat. When they burp, it's bad. So you don't want that. But at any rate, that's a that's a wolf skull, and then. Uh, Could you hold them up higher? Yeah. Let me. I walk just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the skull that'll, that'll tell somebody that knows about it, tell about the age, the health, uh, what they eat, uh, and everything. So it, it works good. Skulls are good. They're, they're clean as they can be, and. Uh, uh, to me, if I could cut, you know, keep any part of an animal, that's what it would be. No, they're, they're not. They're, they're just as much happy and content in the daytime as at night. In fact, being kind of cat-like, or I don't want to say lazy, but they, they do a lot of sleeping at night. They, there's three of them together. They don't, um, um, they don't sleep together, but they're within sight of each other. And the, the snow, you know, doesn't seem to bother them. And I don't think I told you, I, I try to get by without mentioning this. Uh, the, uh, it's not a bad thing, but uh, to be the leader of a wolf pack, you have to be female. That pains me to say that, but uh, and that's a, and, and, and I'm a Christian, so I can make this joke. That's, that's the only mistake the Lord ever made. But uh, we know that's a joke. But no, the, uh, uh, you have to be female. Uh, there has to be a male alpha because that that. A female is the only uh, one that has pups in the pack, and that holds the population down, uh, controls it. But yeah, there has to be a, an alpha male, and uh, he's appointed. He's like a prince. He's appointed, and he can be unappointed at any time. But most of the time, you know, they, they stay together for life. I got one other skull. Let me show you that um, this is a little different. This is one of her ancestors. Anybody know what that might be? Bear. It's, it's a bear, a very lightweight skull compared to the, uh, to the wolf skull. Uh, you know, what's going to kick a bear in the head? Nothing. So, uh, so they don't have to have that. They, uh, they're, they're very hardy animals. They have a, a better memory than you would think. Uh, they have um, 
long-time memory as opposed to short-time memory. But a bear's eyes, little beady black things, so they don't need much of an orbit up here to, to put them in. Uh, and they, they hear very well, but the main thing they do is use their nose. And that's like a jet engine uh, intake there. They take in a lot of air and they can run very fast uh, for a long time, breathing in a lot of, a lot of good air. But the main thing is they can, they can smell for miles and miles. Uh, we tell the campers up there that you know, the hikers and all, uh, an M&M &M will go for maybe five miles. So you, you just don't, don't do that. Um, and that goes for aftershave and everything. But a bear, the bear skull, as far as um, the, um, the, the cranium or the brain cavity, is only about that much. So it's, it's not very big compared to the wolf. Uh, and you can tell that with the intelligence and all. The bear, of course, they have the, the big fangs or the, the uh, canines. That's to grab and hold with, too. But the, uh, the little incisors in the front, they do the stripping, but they're kind of designed to pick berries and roots and herbs and whatever they can get a hold of, leaves. So they're, they're more of a, 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 an omnivore. They'll, they'll take both of them. Uh, but the big thing is they don't have the carnassial teeth on the side. They have molars, and that's to grind and chew with. And from day one, your parents told you to chew your food before you swallow it. Well, a, a bear does that. Uh, maybe that's why he doesn't, doesn't eat that much meat, too. But uh, the molars are there, and um, they serve a good purpose. Another thing, too, if you had comparative anatomy, that was a, that was a real course, but I, I learned a lot, and, and thank goodness remember it. The bear's kind of related to a wild pig or a hog, also a horse. Uh, you see that gap in there? Uh, no teeth? Well, that's where the bit would go if you're going to ride a bear, but that's not, <laughs> not good either. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a space for that. Now, I mentioned that the bear they caught up in, uh, at uh, Clemens Dome, they took a tooth sample uh, to age it. And they didn't bother any of these big teeth that they, it needs to survive. So they, they took the little tooth vestige of, of one of them right in here. And uh, that's enough to, uh, to take back to the lab and age the thing. Uh, it tells of health and everything too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, 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 the alpha female usually gets first choice, but it's quickly followed by um, pups. Always take some. Not allowed to hunt uh, back usually until they're probably two years old, maybe even closer to three when they're mature. But they, they protect those pups at, at all risk. They, um, they also feed the, the old and the infirmed. If that, if that old animal's gonna live and, and uh, recover from a disease or a, uh, uh, getting kicked in the back or something, a broken bone, then they'll, they'll take care of it and they'll leave a wolf or two behind when they do their nomadic thing and, and, uh, and their hunts and all. But they're gonna make sure that everybody's got food. Yes? Um, why do wolves howl and please? Okay. That's a good question. You must have a list there or something. Uh, it, this, this carries the program, thank you. Um, and I'm getting old, so I may forget. But the, uh, uh, yeah, the wolves uh, howl, whatever. Uh, they don't, don't howl at the moon. It's strictly communications. And if you've been around a certain pack long enough, like some biologists out west and up north have been for years, then they can actually uh, determine what they're saying, I guess you'd say. It's, you know, we're going to gather up to eat or, or to hunt, and we're going to gather up to sleep uh, or play or whatever. So it, they all have, have different tones, I guess you would say. Now, uh, have you, uh, well, we all know what a coyote, we mentioned that. Coyotes out west, and back during the old western movie days, they did this yip, yip, and, and a long mournful howl, you know, and sounded like the old west and, and everything. But... Uh, the ones around here don't do that, so I know you've probably heard them around here. They scream, and it sounds like somebody's hurting a lady or a child or something, and, and that's really irritating. Uh, they don't come around my house because that's the only natural enemy a coyote has is a wolf. And you know the coyotes up here have never, uh, including you over there, they, uh, they've never seen, smelled, or heard a wolf. But somewhere back in here, they, uh, they know to be afraid of them. 
so they don't uh, come around my house. For that reason, uh, I've got a chicken coop within 50 feet of the wolf pen. Uh, I'm going to have some goats later on about that close um, out of sight of the wolf pen, but yet the coyote, I'm sure, you know, still smells the wolf. Now, as far as them howling, um, I've been doing this over 30 years, I guess. The, um, uh, my wolves have never howled. They don't howl. Now, they sing, and there's a difference in that. You've got to know there's a difference in singing and howling. And to me, the difference is uh, kind of like the difference in um, bluegrass and opera. You know, I'm, I'm an old, old flat foot clog, and, and I'm, I'd love to be able to pick my five string better. But, but um, yeah, I love bluegrass. So that's something. I wasn't culture, raised in culture in Charlotte, so I, I, don't, I can't appreciate opera. I'm sure it's good, too. But, uh, yeah, singing, howling, same thing. But they'll, they'll hear my truck coming in the evening or when I leave, and they'll, they'll respond and greet me, I guess, as a greeting coming in. Can you give us an example? Huh? I wish we could, yeah. <laughs> I wish we could, and I need to have, maybe you can help me here, I need to have a, uh, um, uh, a tape or a, a CD or something of wolves singing or howling. Uh, that would help. Now, when they're all three together, they, they do it quite readily. Um, if there are a lot of children involved and the wolf is fairly young, then, then they'll do it too. But we can, we can try. And uh, again, I'm going to ask you to be like school children, I guess. And I don't, I don't sing, so I don't know what pitch to tell you. But uh, we'll, we'll try and see what she does. Uh, she may ignore us. Uh, if that's the case, then that's just the wolf. But uh, let me start, and then y'all y'all chime in. If she starts, everybody be quiet so we can hear. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. It may not work. They're smarter than us, and she probably thinks, you know, I hear you, but it ain't gonna happen. So. Different pitches are good, right? Hmm? Yeah, pitches are good, and that's another thing too. The the each animal, in, uh, uh, instinctively or in, on purpose, takes a different pitch in the in the wolf pack. And that way, the other pack over here thinks that they got four times as many wolves as they have. So there's a reason. It's kind of like us Scotsmen. We, we played the bagpipes to scare these other people. Uh, cause, and, and maybe it irritated them enough to where, uh, uh, I mean, we, we didn't have some, some uh, screaming cats, so we had bagpipe. But uh, and this may work. I don't know. You going to get up? Come on, get up. Now you lay down. Now, she, it, I don't want her anymore. This is not the big bad wolf. I'm going to see if I can, can get her to do something. And, and uh, let me tell you, when I get, when I get started, you, you children help me too, okay? Because that may, that may get her started. Okay. And I don't know. That's a, that's a tab out of something. It may go back in something. I'm not sure. Okay, we're going to try. If it doesn't work, then... You're going to hear me, and that's about it. chicken leg quarter for that, so that's good. And I, I've, I've, already, I've already thanked a few people here, but the, the check that was sent to feed these things, I'll give you an example, and I get chicken leg quarters, they call it, thank goodness, but uh, a box of chicken leg quarters would be uh, about, let's see, uh, 40, about 40 pounds. They, uh, that'll feed them for a week, so that really helps, no kidding. Yeah, raw, yeah. Now, they like barbecue. No, they don't do that. No. They are, uh, chicken teriyaki or something. But no, they, they, they eat it raw. They eat it raw. Uh, and that's another thing. I don't, I've, you know, in 30-something years, I've never had to clean up a wolf compound or clean up behind them because uh, it's <coughs> such, such a digestive tract that it's like um, pulverized, uh, uh, I guess,
guess uh, probably just bones, I guess we would say calcium. So there's nothing to really clean up. Now she's tuckered out, you know, <laughs> tired her out. But they, uh, they, they, uh, they're very clean animals. And another thing, and, and people don't believe it, but I've never seen in 30 some years, I've never seen them use a the restroom either at home or their compound. They certainly don't do it inside. So it's a kind of a safe bet, you know. Yes, ma'am. Um. Yeah, I started this years ago because uh, I'm, I've always been, well, I've always been shy and I got over that. But uh, the, uh, the misunderstood is what I hate. You know, you don't have to like what I tell you, uh, but, but please don't misunderstand me uh, no matter what I, what I say. It's the same with the wolf. They were misunderstood that uh, people still think they're a um, uh, Another Another question I get a lot of times People will call and say, now, I've got a picture, or I, I saw a coyote crossed with a wolf. Well, if they're mortal enemies, that ain't going to happen. They're not going to have time to have a pup. So that, that's not going to happen. It's the same with uh, black snakes and, and timber rattlers. I get those calls, come out and identify this or that. Uh, good Lord didn't make them that way. So it's, it's not going to happen. But as far as uh, uh, the future, I mean, they needed somebody to speak for them back then. Not as much now. But the... Uh, the future uh, here in, in North Carolina, I don't think they're ever going to have them. They have to have a big enough range to feel safe in. And that means uh, no highways, no houses, whatever. And extraneous noise and smells that the humans put off. So, uh, No, I, I really thought that would happen because I, I back up to the, to the Smokies up On, and they didn't bring them in because the research that they had done ahead of time uh, showed them that the bear, uh, the wild pigs, several other things, the coyotes, fortunately, were taken up of them out. Now, when they first brought the elk in, they, uh, uh, the, the cow elk didn't know to defend uh, the deprivation was a big thing for maybe the first couple of years. Uh, they came from land between the lakes of Kentucky, Tennessee. The second herd came out of Canada. The first herd was tightly bonded. They actually were enclosed in a big fence in a huge area. So they were they were tight. The second one Canada. I think they just Well they pretty quickly dispersed in Catalucci Valley. The first one stayed there. Second one dispersed and now they're downtown Bryson City, Maggie Valley. Cherokee, they stand in the road, they own the road, and what part of it they don't own, the turkey own the rest of it. But uh, as far as them ever coming back into the park, I don't think they're going to do that. There was a lady that got her uh, PhD in, in wildlife biology up there with the elk and did a great job. Uh, I was in uh, Rotary for 36 years, I'm not now, but the, um, she came and did a program for Rotary and told us all the high-tech stuff. She was in uh, at East Tennessee um, at the university with the satellites and everything, and she knew when the, uh, for example, she knew when the calves were, were dropped, when they were born, and they did that by capturing a few uh, cows, and uh, the bolus was dropped and the satellite went off. So they, she responded from East Tennessee over here in a, in a hurry with a group and they actually found the calves a lot quicker because when that calf's dropped that mama leaves and uh, uh, no scent is left behind and that calf is hard to find so they they wanted to find them at that time way back when and uh, the early 200s and they um, they wanted to find them in cholera way of me And I guess it has to do with where most of them are or were. <clears throat> a long time ago, they, uh, uh, they were like the Plains Indians. Uh, they had their own territory. And, uh, and they would actually fight to keep it. But uh, a pack, you know, if it's left alone, it's not going to go looking for a fight. 
Let me grab a sip of stuff here. I have to do that during the day to keep talking up there too. But no, they're, they're not going to go pick a fight. That's why they're not going to go after a human. Now, the big cats are different. And, and again, I guess I'm, I'm taking up for the big cats for the wildlife, but I, I think you will too because a big cat out west, um, well, first of all, if you have a cat, you know what they like to do. They like to chase things. They like to ambush, chase, catch, play with, and if it's good to eat, they'll eat it. So the, the bicyclists out there, the, um, the joggers, the runners, backpackers uh, that want to run instead of being still, they, um, uh, they'll go after them. So the big cats do probably do some damage. <coughs> but it's a shame to have to punish the cat. Yeah, the the, um, the Malamutes probably they they think probably the closest, and that's another thing <coughs> too. I talked to a school group uh, and mentioned the fact that all uh, dogs came from wolves a long time ago. Our wolves here in North America came from Europe, so they all can be traced back that far. Uh, the uh, the dogs came from wolves, and we can say that without using the e word. E word didn't happen, uh, and. <laughs> people if they know what evolution is, but it's called adaptation. Man, way back when, decided that the, the wolf would come up to the campfire, <clears throat> sometime would bring its pups, and they would feed it. So they, they weren't tame, they weren't trained by any means, <clears throat> but the, um, uh, they adapted what they found and could, could hold on to, like some of the pups, because the, um, uh, they might have seen one that had shorter tail, longer ears, had a better personality, whatever. So all that <clears throat> went on for years. Now we call it genetic engineering. But um, uh, that, that's the way it got started. And, and I tell people, if it was evolution, then th th we wouldn't have any more wolves. They would turn into dogs. Didn't, didn't happen. Now micro evolution happens every day, every minute. Anybody else? Okay, okay that, that's a good point, too. Um, go back to the coyote for a minute. Uh, he's, he's not your shepherd. And he'll come in your backyard and find you uh, if they can entice your dog off to the corner of the yard and um, uh, take it with them, then they produce coy dogs, and that's very dangerous. The wolf, um, the wolf is, is not going to happen. Um, you, can, you can make a hybrid at um, in a vet clinic or a yeah yeah a kennel or a vet clinic is pretty much required to to have a wolf hybrid and again it's this the dog part that's going to bite you we we bred our dogs to be a protective and aggressive now the german shepherd uh, is a different story i thought it came off fairly close with the, the malamutes or cheetahs but um but the, uh, the German Shepherd, no, it, uh, they're so highly refined, especially the German Shepherd. And, and you can really tell the difference, the demeanor and everything, trainability. But uh, not much later. I thought that, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. No, uh-uh, no. But I think, but she could be mixed up with something else, I don't know. Failed. And it's a terrific thing. Generation after generation. We will reckon people from
some reason they want that wolf looking dog. so that they, they won't have an odd-looking wolf, I guess. But uh, they, they really don't want it once they get it, and then they can't get rid of it. Uh, a wolf in a wolf hybrid in, a, in an animal shelter popped them out most of the time, and they wind up putting them down. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's legal to breed wolf dog hybrids? Yeah, it's legal. No, they, there's no law against it. There's no law against you really keeping... A wolf, other than the fact they would, uh, the state prefers that the wolf is put in a, a zoo, a compound behind bars. And I don't think it's a good idea to have wolf hybrids at all. I don't deal with it. Now, the lady over here at Black Mountain on Highway 9, she is, she is very good. She's good at what she does. She's a wolf hybrid rescue. Couldn't and wouldn't do. Here, she's nonprofit. I probably should have gone nonprofit a long time ago, but I didn't. But at any rate, uh, uh, she does a great job. She handles the wolf hybrids, and, she'll take them and um, uh, usually can't adopt them out. So she she's got them and takes care of them for ever and ever. But she uh, she also feeds hers uh, dog food and. Uh, um, I can't feed mine dog food. They, they can't utilize it. I've tried before, and they crunch it, and then these carnassials, it just shatters everywhere. And then if they do get a good uh, a quantity of it down, it goes through them like a dose. So it doesn't work. Yes? So would you say he was bonded to you? I mean, like, if I wanted to take him, would you just go with me, or would he want to go with you? Yeah, yeah, that's probably... Uh, it's hard to say because they, they love children so much and, and, and women too, and they tolerate men quite well. But they, uh, um, they don't, uh, as, as far as, you know, a real tight bond like your dog, no, it's not there. It's like, it's like a cat again. And I'll mention too th this, that they have a, a terrific um, uh, sense of knowing the, the qualities of a person. Uh, at Catalucci Ranch, um, I tried to get the wolf go to an older man. They usually, an older man, they, they like them. So I guess maybe it's a trust or hormone or something. The wolf wouldn't go near this old person. And after the program, I was putting the wolf back in the truck. And a lady came out to me. She said, it was my husband that your wolf can get near. And I said, but it's okay. No problem. Uh, no, no hard feelings. Everything's good. She said, well, I have to live with him. Said, uh, <laughs> so he, he's a, he's a, Said, said he, he hates animals. He, 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 hates, he doesn't like children. She said, I don't think he has any friends. So, uh, and I thought, yeah, okay. You don't, you don't fool a wolf, you know. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it, it was, it was a matter of about, you know, like I say, thirty something years ago. It was a matter of wolves being shy and misunderstood. And uh, uh, back then, Hollywood, believe it or not, was doing even more to perpetuate the myth and everything. And most of us, a lot of us grew up hearing the, the old fairy tales and stories about the wolf eating the grandmother and all this other stuff. And we, we've done that kind of research, and we couldn't find enough grandmother. But, uh, but they, uh, uh, that, that doesn't happen to three little pigs. And you still turn on TV and see the commercials with the big bad wolf and the three little pigs. And, and there's another one where they're making stuffed animals and they're, they're making little sheep, little lambs, and then for no reason, here came, comes the wolf across the bottom of the picture. And it didn't have a thing to do with it. Uh, but to, I'll tell you so you won't uh, waste your money. Um, what was the movie that was put out about a couple of years ago about the airplane crash? Uh, we'll go out in the dark 
like uh, two hours. Wolves were playing on. Didn't happen. Uh, yes, sir. Do you think that the wolf in the eastern U.S. or southeastern could be a solution to feral pigs? Yeah, yeah, and, and to a certain extent. But the wolves, again, are smart critters. Um, they're not going to try to uh, uh, to go after a um, a boar, a male pig, with the big tusks. They they know that they'll get hurt. Um, the bear dog, the bear dogs, the hog dogs, dogs are bred uh, not to care. I mean, they're they're just gung ho, and um, I think they're what they are. They 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 go head first into everything. But no, you can't you can't deter those dogs, and they do. They get hurt. If you look at some of the the movies or the pictures of a a hog dog or a bear dog, a lot of times they have uh, a Kevlar suit on so they won't get hurt. But uh, no, I, I think they would take care of the of the ones they could, young ones and all, big ones and all. Uh, what I want to do, and again, it's because we have a large group. Let me go stand outside the door and uh, or in the hall, wherever you want me, and uh, just kind of file by. We'll have to act like school school children, and um, uh, I want you to touch it, pet it. The um, only thing I'll ask you, and you're old enough not to do it. Don't get the wolf face. Uh, I'm gonna bite you. He hadn't in in thirty something years. I'll bite you, but uh, but the the wolf won't. And uh, I finally figured out why children like Peter, they grow up with stuffed animals, and you know that's the best thing to do. They cuddle with them and and they want to do it with the wolf. Uh, but no, she's not gonna bite anybody. And uh, I, I raised them from six months or uh, six weeks on up uh, by touching them all over uh, feet. Uh, ears, nose, uh, pulling their lips up. I can do that to show people their teeth, and and it doesn't doesn't phase them. Again, they're they're socialized is what it is. But I appreciate y'all asking me, and uh, uh, you've been a great group. Uh, the questions have been.